Good morning again. <clears throat> uh, this is kind of me, the basic tutorial on what ATIOLs are, Advanced Technology Intraocular Lens impl Implants. There are um, several versions of that in the United States. There are more versions of it in Europe and Canada. But Today I'll be talking about the Symphony lens. That's the lens that uh, I reviewed uh, in a previous video. The Symphony is the latest and greatest uh, version of ATIOLs from Johnson & Johnson. Uh, again, as I mentioned in that video, it's none of these lenses are perfect. If anyone tells you that you're going to be free of glasses forever, that is a lie. Um, I tell my patients uh, you should maybe have about an 80% reduction in your need for both far and near glasses, but that's not everyone. Some people need glasses after this lens implant. It's still something I recommend. It's something that uh, the market for this is going to expand. As the years go on, more and more people are going to want these because it is good. Uh, it is a good thing. Uh, these lenses are uh, advancing in quality um, every six months, every 12 months. Uh, having done this for almost 20 years, uh, we have seen a sea change in the technology that's available to us. And I like it. I recommend it. But again, it's not perfect. Nothing in life is perfect. Nothing in healthcare is perfect. So if you are a perfectionist and uh, assume that uh, you will be 100% satisfied, um, this isn't the route for you to go because your expectations are inappropriate. Um, what do ATI wells do? Again, I like to keep things simple. So no technology, drawings. The lens, your eyeball and lens are to the right here. So the lens sits inside your eye. Again, this is a crude drawing. This is your eye. And the light passes into your eye and goes into your brain. So what are you trying to look at? You are trying to look at your television. This could also be driving. Anything greater than... Um, Basically, your arm's length, um, we would consider to be, quote-unquote, distance vision. So, D is for distance. So, you're trying to watch your television. You, um, let's say you were nearsighted before the surgery, um, and you want to get rid of those glasses that you need all of the time, and you get an ATIOL, you're going to see this pretty darn well. ATIOLs, uh, one of their downside risks or problems is not the distance vision. Uh, these lenses are really good at distance vision. In fact, they are probably better than a monofocal uh, lens than non-ATIOLs. They have a little bit of uh, quote-unquote give in them uh, that can adjust um, if we're not exactly on the right dioptrage power uh, that I showed you on the lens box and what we calculate using the preoperative measurements. So, not to worry about this. This is like, I would say, less of an issue or a non-issue. So, you're looking at your cell phone. You're reading the newspaper. You are shopping and you... Um, want to look at prices of Lay's potato chips. Some of you may have to take your glasses off and get very close. If you're nearsighted, some of you may have to put reading glasses on or look through your bifocals. These ATIOLs, and in particular the Symphony lens, is very, very good at correcting this intermediate vision. Again, Having put a lot of these in, um, I would suggest that that is, again, a non-issue with uh, Symphony Lens. So that is intermediate. 
Now, near vision, you're signing a check. You are looking at a small detail on your fingernail. You're trying to get very close to pluck your eyebrows. You are looking at a pill bottle. You're looking at something in the phone book. Uh, Symphony is not perfect at that. You just don't get that super duper high quality, what we're going to call near vision. Um, that patients always, 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 always want. Does that mean the symphony lens is terrible? No. Um, again, one has to be rational about um, what ophthalmologists can do, what healthcare can do for human bodies. No, if you think you're going to have surgery and see like you did when you were 15, that is not rational. Um, but if out of a lens you can get really good far vision, really good intermediate vision, and kind of good up-close vision, it's something that um, is a good choice. And, of course, if you have the money, because remember, these lenses cost money. Um, and it's a issue that you cannot appeal to your insurance company. You just have to pay cash for it. So those are the considerations for this lens. Now, Symphony, uh, because it doesn't provide this intermediate vision, I'm sorry, it doesn't provide this near vision as well as um, both the doctor and the patient would love it to, but we have good intermediate and distance vision. One of the things that J&J, &J, &J, Johnson & Johnson, has trialed and has some fairly good um, data on is what they call personalized vision, or I call mix and match. Um, this is going to get slightly complicated for a minute. Symphony lens goes in your uh, dominant eye. In another video, I'll show you how to figure that out. So you're going to see intermediate and distance really well. And their multifocal product, which I will unbox in another video, does a lot better with near. Again, some history. As these lenses have matured over the last 20 years, uh, initially the emphasis was on near vision. We thought it was cool that you could put a lens on your eye and see really, really well up close. So the lenses were designed to favor up close vision at the expense of intermediate and near. It was kind of the reverse. Great, pretty good, terrible for the older lenses. And then the newer ones, we realized humans like to see far away. That's their preference. And if they get some near uh gilding on the rose as it were so the newer lenses then went the opposite way doesn't the pendulum swing all the time in life so great distance pretty good not great so the symphony is in that category of lens great pretty darn good not perfect so personalized vision from j&j &J, said, hey, let's put one of the lenses that's great for um, distance and intermediate, Symphony, and let's put one of the lenses that's really great for near, multifocal, in two separate eyes in the same human. And again, they call that personalized vision. I call that mix and match. Uh, it works pretty well. It's a little bit... Uh, off-putting at first for the patient. It does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, it's kind of like wearing monovision contact lenses, if any of you have done that in the past. Um, but it does work, and it does give you that full spectrum of vision that you're desiring. The only caveats are, again, if you are an irrational human, and you're looking out of one eye and then comparing it to the other, and you're complaining that they look different. Well, they do. 
that's intentional. So if you can't handle that or understand that concept, that shouldn't be something you're doing. Secondly, it's a lot of um, calculations and um, concern for the ophthalmologist about determining eye dominance and um, lots of attention to detail to which implant is going in which eye. Um, so it is a little tedious to use a term for it, uh, but it is something that um, I have done and I do like and patients have a good result. As a long-term matter, that is not where ophthalmologists want to be. We want to have a lens that provides continuous uh, vision across all of these uh, spectra um, in one lens uh, without the tedium of uh, these calculations or the patient annoyance. But again, technology in life gets better every year uh, in ophthalmology, and so uh, we can't wait forever. Sometimes we just have to do things that are in front of us, and this is a reasonable um, intervention. What do these lenses cost? Uh, it varies across the country a whole bunch. Um, somewhere between $2,000 and $6,000. Um, sometimes these are paired up with laser cataract surgery. Again, uh, our group doesn't do that. I don't do that because we don't like laser cataract surgery at all. Um, but uh, that's kind of the range of a cost for these. Again, it's a cash payment or it's um, something you finance on your own. And uh, is that good or bad? Uh, I'm not sure. If it's something you want, then you do it. And if you don't want it, you still have surgery, you have your cataracts out, you see a hell of a lot better. Uh, you wear glasses. Um, it's a personal choice. I tell patients it's like getting uh, a car with uh, all the bells and whistles and you add 10,000 bucks to the bottom line or, you know, you want uh, <clears throat> roll-up windows and no air conditioning. That That's kind of your personal choice. But in summary, I do like these lenses. Um, they are something that will grow in patient usage uh, as the years go on. Thank you.